last time we met, we looked at the U.S. ideologies, the different ideologies of the U.S. or the different foreign policies of the U.S. Could we, could somebody, one ideology, the first ideology that we looked at? What the manifest. The ideology? They? Manifest one, sir. Manifest, this manifest one. There's manifest no such destiny. thing as manifest one. They manifest. Very manifest destiny. Very good. Not manifest one. Because you go say manifest one and students go in the exam and put manifest one. <laughs> yes, the manifest destiny. Uh, the next one was. Monroe Doctrine. Monroe Doctrine. Uh, next one. The Dollar Diplomacy. So? No, it's Roosevelt. Oh, Roosevelt. Oh, Roosevelt. Uh, Colony. What, is it? what is another name for Roosevelt? Big Stick Policy. Big Stick. Big Stick Policy. Very good. I can see some great ones coming out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Section C is the section that gives students the most problem. The U.S. question, because we usually cover U.S. in the Caribbean in three weeks. You are better than the other groups because you are doing it in one term. So you should be ready. When you see the U.S. question, the first paper... First part, you turn to answer the question in section C. Her best belief is that I'm going to do. I swear. Huh? Girl, I said, best belief is that I'm going to do. <laughs> I go into section C first. I plan to where I'm going first. If a question is easier for do that, may I do first? I'm marking the question then that is the easiest one. <laughs> I'm not stress so, myself to beat them exam. I like off I take become of the French exam after it. The the truth is that once you see section C, once you're going to section C and see those two lovely questions, you said, Oh, I can do anyone. Because I believe that so far, if we are doing US, and I, I find US to be a very nice topic. Um uh, agree. Yes, sir. Um, yes, yes sir. U.S. nice. Sir, it's basically we tracing out the U.S. in, in class for for, in the sake of education. What's not, what, not, what's not to like? Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Sir, did you not see that history was made yesterday? Yesterday, yes. Some of the history. <laughs> And yes, then, sir. Where is Chicago Tech Place, man? Where is Chicago Tech Place? And and also when you look at section C, then you, you might when you turn to section B, you might find section B to be fun also. Why, sir? It's kind of <laughs> really hard to go um study over indigenous people and the European the hey, A, sir. Mm. Yes, I was trying to do it. I said, no, so my mind is too much on like the United States and metropolitan. All right, let us tell you one stuff that you can do to, to, to review. I have the grade 10 recordings, the current grade 10 recordings online on YouTube. Utilize it with your study. So they decide that when you go into the exam coming in step in coming up, a this exam weeks from coming now. Up, yeah, you have the first. It is on I think February one on my the, birthday, sir. Oh my, so sorry to hear. So this is it now, ladies. You in section A from what I've seen on the paper, section A. Indigenous people and European Caribbean economy and slavery, right? B, resistance and revolt. C, 
metropolitan movement. So those are the three topics that you're going to do. I have on the rec well, you have the recordings for metropolitan movement and resistance uh, mm -hmm. already, especially when it comes to the different, we started out with Haiti. Uh, we spent a very long time on Haiti. Then we look, each of you would have done individual presentations on Haiti and also the different individual revolts, slave revolts. So study, the, study them based on the revolt. Also, you need to, for the first part of the syllabus, indigenous people and European, all those recordings are there. Right? For grade 10, the grade 10 that I have now. Go and look at the recordings. For Sir, I'm, I'm just like asking a small favor. You know, for all those wonderful record for all those wonderful um reports for the presentations that we did. The videos mm. are there, sir, but I don't know if it's anybody like me who'd appreciate the PowerPoint presentation so I can go through the presentation itself and not have to listen to anybody else's talking. So it'd bring the world to me if they could just post the PowerPoints themselves, or at least send them to me if you don't want to post them. I asked the groups to post the PowerPoints, but they just some come of them in there. I said some of them, and I'm one of the persons, but... Yes, well, if I can, please, I'd send them to my post in the Google Classroom, please. I can't watch over the 45 minute video and tackling three presentations. That's not going to work for my little brain. <laughs> Listen, last term, last year I was doing a course. And sometimes the class goes, but I shouldn't have said that anyway, I not tell you that. But what I, what I did was that I go over the power <laughs> the so the course was on maybe a Thursday. I think it was on a Tuesday. And what I do on a Thursday is that I just listen back the presentation and make my notes. It is always, Sir, good, to listen. It is always good to listen to the presentation. Sir, YouTube has prepared me for all of this, sir, because I will sit down and watch an um, hour-long video. So now... The 45 minute videos are nothing to me, sir. Exactly. So I sit down and watch it just the same. In the Cuban Revolution, I sit down and watch the one or almost 30 something minutes documentary on the Cuban Revolution. And it's like it was nothing because it was interesting. Yeah, and I agree. Revolution too. I agree. Lady, YouTube but... prepared me, sir. Yes, so just listen to the presentation because I listen to my the, the from the course, listen to the presentation, well, the, the lecture most time. So two things I have in front of me. I have the PowerPoint and I have the the, the recording. And I'm making my notes. Making my notes. Watch because some things that you say in the PowerPoint, well, some things that is in the recording is not on the PowerPoint. So it is always good to listen to the recording. Listen, if you take 45 minutes to listen to a recording and then you have the liberty to say, all right, I know this point already. You move to the, you move the video to another section. Or, you get what I'm saying? You do it yes, that way. Be creative, ladies. You can get the grade ones. Everybody, is, it, is this here, this group? No. Oh, my Caribbean studies group, everybody got grade one. Not this, not the grade 11. The lowest was a grade two. What, sir? Sir, that no bad. Huh? That's not bad. It's not bad. The grade two is not bad. Some students felt it was bad. I believe only two students got grade two out of everybody. Everybody else. And now me would have feel bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody I walk out. Oh my god, one egg. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, two. Sir, 
All I know, I'm just mash up with the little um, timetable. Sure, we need to start a petition because I swear they looked at all the subjects I did and just said nobody is stupid enough to do all of them. So let's just fling her to the dogs. She don't, she don't, no picking is stupid enough to do IT and geo and history and then add French and account. Somebody is stupid like that. I think that's what they, they did. How can you put Spanish and a foreign language paper to not Spanish together? Spanish and a foreign language. What is, what is foreign? What, 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 what is Spanish? Fo- what is a foreign language? History and a, <laughs> history and a foreign language. On the and same day. And they're both paper tools. So if it was a paper <laughs> woman. No, wrong Don't wrong. worry about it, ladies. They're going to... To pull through, you are brilliant young ladies. Sir, we don't have a life now. Most are not have no life after this. Every year, people. Every year, right? Every year, I suck up to talk to me. It's Andrews do it. Wait, ladies. Every year you complain about exam, and this persons who complain the most do the best. Let me Sir, get to that. Not true last year. Not <laughs> complain, Wally. Let's get to that. Barb, <laughs> Let me I'm saying that you are a hypocrite. Bars. Oh, I am <laughs> I'm just yes, kidding. Really. All right, ladies, let us get back to, to this. Sir, I am definitely a hypocrite. Like, I am big time. Sir, I always cut and say I'm not going to do the work. Check me later. I'm the same. Yes, exactly. Who, who the first the person that do work? Who first, who first has submit it? That is true. I agree. Who not going to do well, man? You are brilliant young ladies. <laughs> the, so we look at the last one that we look we we, are, we we the last so we look one manifest destiny two manual doctrine three rules of El Colory are big stick and the last one we look dollar at was is it dollar diplomacy very good now ladies another popular question in the exam very popular just like how you see the objective on your screen. That is how the that is how they ask the question. If you look on your 2013 past paper, if you have your past paper with you, look on your 2013 past paper, you will see you will see the uh, the question on it, one of the questions, which is the exact same thing. Discuss the United States' interest. <laughs> one second. <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> shit, I don't want 10 13. Yes, this caused the United States interest in the Caribbean between 1776 and 1870. Let us tell you up front. In 1776, what happened? The United States declared their independence. Very good. They declared the 13 colonies would have declared themselves independent. Yes, yeah, sorry. The third, the, the 13 colonies would have declared themselves independence and they form what is now the United States. So what was the interest of this new country in the Caribbean between 1776 and 1870? So that is the year that we are cutting off. No, I'm telling you up front that after 1880, the United States is going to get extremely, uh, extremely involved in the Caribbean affairs. Very, very involved. And so we need to know the reason why were they interested in the Caribbean? Right? 
And these are the reasons they were interested in the Caribbean. One, they were interested in the Caribbean because of trade and investment. So they wanted to trade, they wanted to invest in the Caribbean. Two, they were interested in the Caribbean because of expansionism. They wanted to expand their geographical boundary, right, or borders. Three, they were interested in the Caribbean because of defense. And four, they were interested in the Caribbean because of their ideology. Now, when you're in the exam and you're discussing ideology, you can't discuss the ideologies that is after 1870. So which ideologies we would discuss here? Which one of the ideologies are foreign policies up to 1870? So one, yes. So we know for sure that one of the ideology here is manifest destiny. And that was which year? 1801, sir. Very good, 1801. So we know that it is not in the time. It is way before 1870. Go ahead for me, Emmins. Sir, we could also discuss the Monroe Doctrine, which was in December of 1823. Very good, Monroe Doctrine, 1823. So if you have a question like this, discuss the United States interest in the Caribbean between 1776 and 1870. These two ideologies, Right, they fall within the timeline. Roosevelt Colory, sir, that was 1904. It wouldn't fall in the timeline. Very good. The next one is the dollar diplomacy, which was in 1909. That also would be outside of the timeline. So these are the two ideologies at this time that is going to fuel the United States' interest in the Caribbean. Go ahead for me, Curry. Sir, Ashley. ask him if you could go back to the timeline a second. Thank you, sir. All right, good, good. Next, we, so we look now at the, re, so these are the reasons they are going to be interested in the Caribbean. Now, between 1776, and 1870, the United States industrial and manufacturing sector grew significantly. Now, what do we mean by industry and what do we mean by manufacturing sector? We are saying that after they got their independence, up to the year 1870, their economy would have grew their industry, their manufacturing economy, sorry, their manufacturing sector. What do we mean by manufacturing? That is the first one I want to know. Their manufacturing sector. Sir, the industries, sir, they had more, more organizations that could supply food and more enterprises. Oh, very good. More organized, more enterprises. Yes, that is correct. Lawrence? Sir, they had more machines to increase the production of their goods that were in handmade. Yes, they had more machines to increase production of goods. Go ahead for me, Bartley. Sir, they were producing more goods. Yes. So they were producing more goods. So manufacturing means the production of goods. So there's a lot of things that they are going to use raw material to produce some byproducts, right? And also industry is also linked to manufacturing, but industry includes the wider economy not just the manufacturing sector, 
but things like mining and uh, building of roads and all of these things. Go ahead. Make the point for me. I was saying agriculture. Agriculture, very good. The livestock industry. And so we know for sure, although this period that we, we, we're looking at is part of the United States period of industrialization. Britain would have gone through their period of industrialization. The US went through their period of industrialization. And their industrialization continued beyond 1870. But we know that during this period, they were becoming an industrial country, meaning that they are producing quite a lot in agriculture. They are producing quite a lot when it comes to byproducts. They are building roads, they are expanding. Uh, some reasons for the US industrialization is that they will, one of the reasons why they would have uh, emerge as an industrial country is because they would have expanded their geographic space. So there are 13 original colonies and they, they, then they would have either purchased some of the land or through war, they would have received some other lands to the east. And so the more land you have, you, the more space you have to either to plant goods or to set up factories or to build roads and all of these different stuff. And so what was the policy or the ideology that the US had to expand geographically? Manifest destiny. The manifest destiny, very good. So we know for sure that they are expanding during the period from 1776 to 1870, they would have expanded significantly. During this period, the US would have produced 30% of the world manufactured goods. You see like how China is producing everything right now? At this time, Britain was fearful of the US. France was fearful, Spain was fierce, fearful, <clears throat> Portugal was fearful because the US was producing 30% of the world manufactured goods and they were, the, the percentage every year increased. And all their expansion that they are doing because they had the idea about their manifest destiny, the more they expand, the more they have natural resources. So they are finding coals, iron, lead, copper, petroleum, quite a lot of things that they are finding in terms of natural resources, which they can use or which they have used or had used in their manufacturing sector. Next. At this time, the US is implementing certain innovation. So things like the cash register, the electric telegraph, the typewriter, the adding machine, which is the calculator. And so at this time, between 1776 and 1870, the US was becoming wealthier than Britain. And the truth is, the truth and in fact is that sometimes, some, sometimes when it, some people used to put you under bondage and you are becoming way wealthier than them, they don't like it. Mm. Oh, yes. I remember Can once. I that's amen. the word, sir. Amen, amen, amen. Preach on, preacher. Yes. <laughs> so... I remember when I was going to school and you know, I had a group of friends and you'd expect says, you know, it's an all boys school. They wouldn't expect boys to behave a certain way. And all of us were friends. So when the graduation happened, we had the graduation. 
I was leaving now fifth form. And in the graduation, I never expect to get any prize, to be honest. So every <laughs> minute they call me and they give me some prize for something, everything, academic achievement, this, that, 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 that. I had about eight or nine prize and they had about 12 category. I believe the only one I didn't get prize for was for sports. <laughs> but understand. Every single thing. <laughs> me thinks me and this young man a friend very good friends you know because we every evening we take the bus together if his parents come and pick us pick him up at school they would drop me home uh if my father come to school and pick me up which is once in every blue moon a mother gets he, he got right from me and you know I had no idea that he was envious. So at the end of the day, he said to me that there was one prize that he didn't get and it was academic excellence. And he said to me, I don't understand how you got that prize. I should be the one to get it. <laughs> Mr. Lord Jesus. This is yeah, terrible. Same shit and I laugh like something funny. Me, listen. And uh, I said, no, this is terrible. And other people, you know, other, some of my friends here. And they said, no, sir, that is not right. And so after that, I realized that we, he called less. When it's time for lunchtime, we reach back for six. All summer, we never hear from him. Mm -hmm. Reach back, reach back okay. for school. We realize that when school, him stay under the tree, or him have new friends and whatever. I mean, I say, anyway, we never expect them be a different boy, but I see him up to today and I call to him, man. So, him still don't and, answer, sir? Uh, yeah, man. Him this, him you know, I see him. <laughs> him, him answer. Sure, but so what are you what kind of work him do? Right now? No, it may tell you we are going to know. <laughs> oh, no. So, Hello, so this... So... One or two mix so, up. Very good. And blame, so, blame. You, Mila. But the truth and in fact, if you look like a situation like that, US know which was the underdog, right? Britain know they are getting very wealthy and Britain is trying to keep malice with the U.S. and try to frustrate them. So every time they go to a meeting, the U.S. is, and U.S. make a point, they try to shut them up. But at the same time, they were becoming very wealthy, industrialization. And so we know for sure that they are expanding in industry and manufacturing. Now, what would you what would be your next plan if you were the United States between 1776 and 1870? What would be an expand? You're expanding, you have manufacturing going for you, you have industry going for you. What would be an next plan? Try to take over. <laughs> so one, you're taking over, yes. You are taking over. What would be a next plan? Think about manufacturing and industry. Sir, broad my horizon. The place that I take over, start putting, putting industries and stuff in this that can make even more money. Because at the end of the day, during that time, money equals to power. And the more money and the more territories you had, the more powerful you became. And if you got to the point where you were as big as Britain, you could probably take on Britain and show them that, hey, the people that made the truth to the side and won't kill off. See, we here. Yes. So that is but I love how Kenneth said um in those days money is power. Yeah, we have like money is not power now. Money exactly. is power today. Money is for always. <laughs> always. always. From, from the time of Abraham until now. <laughs> Lord <have> mercy. <laughs> because the more goat and sheep you had, the more money you had back in Abraham. From silver. <laughs> right from and silver and gold. 
So the, I understand the point. So you will put in place, you will try to take over. But take over what? Trade. The colony, like country. Um, take over the, the industry so like try and get, yeah. um, get your um, consumers or customers to come over to your market. Try and like, like widen your market. Like try to have a monopoly, you know, because if you are the, if you are the one selling the most, everybody will come to you and leave the other ones. So again, you're gonna expand and get more money. Oh, see, Sir, and w- they would make sure that them have the best quality. You exactly. Know? So, Very uh, good. Go ahead. So like, and then they make sure that them have most of the like um necessities, the goods mm-hmm. that are needed in most of the countries and that they are of good quality so that those countries can automatically come to them mm-hmm. and buy the things from them. Them get more money. <laughs> yes. And them be Britain over one side. <laughs> Some of them forget about Britain. Very good. Very good. You are correct. And so, for example, all the points are correct. Trade. They, are need, they need to find if, well... The U.S. at this time, they were trying to find places to sell their goods, their manufactured goods. They wanted market for their goods because they are producing so much. They can't use everything that they are producing. They need to sell some of those goods. And also, Britain would have had a very strong trading relationship not Britain, the U.S. would have had a strong trading relationship uh, with the British West Indies colonies, right? And so although Britain tried to frustrate them by changing the policies over and over, they still had some form of trade with them. Whether it was illegal, they were still trading And so when you are discussing this part in the exam, you need to talk about the trade that they had and the different goods that the Caribbean plantations needed because the plantations in the Caribbean relied significantly for certain goods from the United States. And at the same time, the U.S. was looking for new markets because they realized that England or Britain was giving them a, a serious problem with trading with the British mm-hmm. West Indies. Even though the trade continued, even though it was illegal at points, but guess what? They searched for new market, so they searched for they started to trade with the French West Indies, the Spanish West. Mm-hmm. In this, right? They also traded with Latin America and they also traded with Brazil. So they started to trade with countries like Brazil, Latin America, the Spanish West Indies, the French West Indies. They started to trade with other places, not only with the British West Indies, although. At times, the trade was unstable or illegal. So there was still some form of trade. You're making all these goods. You have all these resources that you have. You're developing all of these machines. You're becoming wealthy. You need customers. Think like a business person. This is one thing with the United States. They don't think like a country. They think like a business. And so they want places to sell their goods. And if you are giving me a problem, I'm going to search for other places. So, for example, by 1840, almost half of the Cuban trade was with the U.S. Trading. So they were interested in the Caribbean because they wanted, and that is the point you need to make to the examiner, they were interested in the Caribbean because they wanted a market to sell their 
manufactured goods. And you give some examples of their manufactured goods and the different ways in different places they seek market. So like the French West Indies, the Spanish West Indies, Latin America and Brazil. They were interested in trade. They wanted trade, they wanted to control trade in the, in the Caribbean. The next is that they were interested in place to invest. And on the point of trade, one of you make the very important point that not only they were interested in trade, but they wanted a monopoly. They wanted to control trade, international trade. So everybody need to look to them. And if they, if they trade and they control, well, if they trade with everybody and they control the trade, then they are now very powerful. Not only is the United States going to want places to trade, but they are going to look for places to invest. So they are going around in the Caribbean seeking to purchase different islands seeking to capture different islands because they want to set up industries on those islands. They wanted those islands because they wanted trade. And so they offered to buy Cuba two times, more than two times, but in this period up to 1870, they offered to buy Cuba in 1849 and also 1854. So they went to Spain and they said, Spain, just like how you sell me Florida, sell me Cuba. Sell me Cuba because they wanted to take over all the industries in Cuba. Cuba is the largest island in the Caribbean. It is the closest to them. You can swim across. Right? Cuba was very important to the United, well, and still is very important to the United States. And so they wanted Cuba to take over their different industries there. And so the US offered to buy Cuba because they wanted to invest in Cuba. Next, go ahead for me, Lauren. Sir, I was just going to add that the Sugar industry in Cuba was doing very well at that time also. Oh, yes. Very well. Sir, one would say that, oh, the United States want all them industries to go to Cuba, so Cuba going to benefit a lot. Mm -hmm. all that, but they didn't, <laughs> which is very ironic because everything at one point, the, the Cuban industry uh, was very important, still is, and they would have benefited significantly. In fact, at one point, the Americans owned all the banks, all the sugar industry, all the roads, all the railways, the hospitals, the airport, everything in Cuba. But all of that major investment in Cuba is going to happen after 1870. Oh. Bartley, go ahead. So I was just going to add that Cuba, shipping between Cuba and the United States, it would be easier, it would be quicker, and it would be cheaper because of the close proximity to the US. Yes, very much so. Very much so, and not to talk about the population. Right, sir, new plantations are opening up. But and they have a lot of persons to work. That were good opportunities for investment, so yeah. Very good. And so, very good. And also, the Navassa Island in Jamaica, between Jamaica and Haiti, the United States said that island belonged to them in the 1860s. They also claimed the Moran Keys and the Pedro Keys. So they wanted these places. 
And in fact, in around 1870, the Caribbean started to export banana to the United States. And who ship you think that they are exporting the bananas on? British. British ship. Oh. The United States. United States. Ship? Yes, by this time it's the US ships. Oh. Oh. Because by 1870, as we are going to look at when we look at adjustments, this is why we must look at adjustments first. After slavery ended, the sugar industry in the Caribbean declined and so banana was now becoming a very important crop and the united states cannot grow banana because of their climate only latin america south america and the caribbean can grow banana so sir only country only countries with tropical climate yeah, can grow banana. Banana is a tropical crop. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can't grow banana in the US. So all the different bananas that you see the United States have on their TV advertising for conflicts and that, all of those bananas from Latin America and the Caribbean. Sir, or, sir, or them um, make them in factories. Can they do that? No. They make banana. They no. make everything, grapes, everything they make in factory. They don't make the banana. In fact, the U.S. own all the banana plantations in Latin America. They still do? Uh, still do. So them get them something there for free. Pay and no so, money. yes, so the banana factories in the U.S., one banana factory in the U.S. is larger than the island of Jamaica. Not the US in Latin America. One of the plantations, the banana plantation that the US own in Latin America is larger than the island of Jamaica. One. And they own several. And so we know for sure that they are investing. They wanted place to invest. Just like how they went into Latin America, take over the banana trade there, shipping. They are now pushing that everybody use their ships. They didn't have a rule, but they ensured. And they know that Europe was very far away and they could not provide certain goods for them, for the colonies in the Caribbean. Next, ladies, another reason why the United States was very, very interested in the Caribbean was that they wanted to expand their geographic space. So they were looking for places to expand geographically. So the first thing they did was to get Florida. And they said, Florida belonged to this to Spain, next I want Cuba, next I want Moran Keys, next I want Pedro Keys, right? But guess what? You need to tell the examiner that although they were looking for places to expand, although they made offer to purchase Cuba, Although they made claims to the Moran Key and the Pedro Keys in Jamaica and Navassa Island between Jamaica and Haiti, they did not expand much until after 1870. It was after 1870, the interest was realized. So after 1870, they controlled Cuba, they owned Puerto Rico up to this very day. They purchased the US Virgin Islands in 1917. They took control over the Panama Canal after 1870. But they were interested in the Caribbean because they wanted place to expand geographically. Because according to their manifest destiny, the Americas belongs to them. 
Another reason they were interested in the Caribbean was because of defense. When we hear the word defense, what comes to mind? War, them planning to fight. Huh? They're planning war, to fight. War, you are correct. And if, if there's war that protection. is protection. You need protection. Give me another word for protection. S. Safety. Safety. Huh? Safety. Security. 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 So during this time in the 1870s, or during up to the 1870s, Germany was coming into the Caribbean to try to get places. So while Germany was coming in, investing in the Caribbean places like Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Two, the US was, although they were, they had relationship with Britain, they didn't trust them. They didn't trust them. So they were very fearful of the Britain. They didn't trust the British. They didn't trust the Spanish. They didn't trust the French. They didn't trust the German. They didn't trust anybody from Europe especially after they made such a statement in the Monroe Doctrine, 1803, when they said, I'm warning any European country that if you come over this side, we are going to defend uh, the colonists. And so one of the things is that Europe is saying to themselves, what is wrong with this hurry come up country? And so the U.S. was very, very fearful. And as a result wow. of being fearful, they wanted spaces. So you see that the Pedro Keys, the Pedro Keys are located here. The Marne Keys are located around here. There are three ways to get to the U.S. One, the Gulf of Mexico, which is here. Here, which is the Windward Passage which is right here, the Windward Passage. No, this is the Mona Passage, which is the Mona Passage is between Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. The Windward Passage is between Cuba and Haiti, the Gulf of Mexico and Negada Passage, which is between the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. These are all the different ways to get to the US. So the Caribbean, was very, very important to the US because they had several different routes to get to the United States. And so the US wanted to protect her mainland and to protect her goods that was trading between South America in Brazil, Latin America, and Cuba. She wanted that every time her ship is coming from Brazil to the US or from Colombia, Panama to the US, that it's protected. So the US was very interested, the US was very interested in the Caribbean to protect her steam ships. So nobody is going to come and assault her ship or take away her goods. And so an, another reason is that the U.S. is going to establish a lot of coal stations. And these stations are stations that they use. These stations are stations that they use to refuel the ships because the ships, steamships, use coal. And so at this point, they were interested in the Caribbean one because of trade, two, because of investment, three, because they wanted to expand, four, because of defense. And also their ideology, the Manifest Destiny, the Monroe Doctrine. And a very important quote from Pete Browning said that conscious, this is it, conscious of its strong protective interest, both strategic and commercial, the
the USA saw the Caribbean and Central America as important to its security and prosperity. Because if Germany should take over the Caribbean, then that could pose a problem for earth trade with Central America and Brazil. If Europe should control it, continue to control the Caribbean, that is going to cause a problem for her. Because Europe could say that, listen, you can't travel through our waters. And so she was very interested in the Caribbean to protect her trade, to protect, protect her goods that she sent it from North America to, to different parts of the world and from different parts of the world to North America. But one thing that we need to know is that while we know that they were interested in the, in the Caribbean before, before 1870, after 1880, they got highly involved in the Caribbean. They're going to take over Panama. They're going to take over Haiti. They're going to take over Dominican Republic. They're taking over uh, different parts of the Caribbean, controlling the British West, the West Indies. And so when we return after the break we are going to look at the different ways in which they would have increased their presence in the caribbean after 1880 any question any comments no question no comments all right ladies please read Please read for me, please, ladies. Please read. And when we return on Monday, we continue. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir.